I use the term even more loosely than usual today. Welcome to my computer. Hey, uh, today we're going to do something that for now I'm going to call the eBay Dirty Dozen. Uh, you all know the drill. You got some broken down piece of crap all in your garage and you uh, uh, need a piece of unobtainium for it. Uh, so you uh, hop on over to eBay and you start searching and uh, lo and behold there's results. Uh, Anyway, we're going to give it a try. Today I arbitrarily searched on Ironhead Sportster engine parts. And uh, this is what I come up with. So let's see what it looks like you get. Item number one. Harley Davidson Ironhead Sportster cylinder engine motor jug antique vintage. And I already don't like this because the guy uh, loaded the title up with uh, keywords just to get some hits. But hey, it worked. Nine bucks? Well, ten bucks. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh, problema number one. You got a chip missing out of this area here. FYI, this uh, little spigot that sticks out uh, protects the head gasket, which lays right here, from being impinged upon by hot combustion gases. So if you were to pull this thing on your bike, uh, you would burn right through the head gasket in this area here. Probably wouldn't take too long. A little crusty, but hey, who cares? You expect crusty for $9.99. A little crusty, a little crusty, a little crusty, crusty, uh, a little crustier. A little crusty. You now you got a Harley casting tag. A little crusty. You know, nothing a sandblasting couldn't fix. Ooh, here we go. You got a uh, guy stuck a ruler in there so you could see the nominal diameter. Uh, this has to be a thousand cc jug. The nominal diameter of a thousand cc jug is 3.188, which is three and three sixteenths of an inch. And goddamn pop up thing. The uh, this jug is already three and a quarter. So you got something that's been bored 70, 80 over. This thing is totally useless other than as for a paperweight. That's the last picture. Let's see. He doesn't comment whether it's a thousand or a nine hundred. Let's see what it says about it. Uh, Harley Ironhead cylinder, unsure of the exact year. Look at a photo, style shape you need. Could it could could need to be honed or bored due to age. <laughs> you bore that anymore, there ain't going to be a cylinder anymore. There's a chip on a cylinder wall and a broken fin. Ah, pretty much junk. Let's see what watch item number two is. Okay, number two on the list, OEM 67 to 70. Uh, I'm unaware of a production break there. Let's see. OEM 67 1970 cylinder 900. That would be 900. Transmission. Sportster XOCH head iron head engine. Well, I don't see no transmission in there. I don't see a head in there. I see a jug. Uh, once again, they load the title up with keywords hoping to get hits. $23. It's pretty cheap. Let's see what it looks like. Harley uh, casting tag stamps numbers. Looks sandblasted. Yeah. Looks like it was pitted and sandblasted. Yeah, looks okay. Oh, back up one. Little chip missing. Not a big deal. Uh, what are we measuring here? You know, he's got a number here. Oh, I see what's going on. It's upside down. This is a 3.062. Okay, so 3.062. So this jug is 60 thousandths of an inch oversized. Junk. Uh, looks nice. Yeah, Harley casting tags. Out of focus. Broken fin. Okay, so we've determined it's junk because it's beyond the borable limit already. Although I think you maybe could go 80. 
but you know for all intents and purposes this thing is, is used up let's see what he says about it yeah 57 so he fat fingered up on top there because it is 57 to 70 bores 3.062 the condition item condition of this is good if you're going to use it as a paperweight otherwise it's useless thank you 30 year AMCA member yeah, well, that means nothing. All right, so junk. Let's see what else we got. Oops. Motor cases. 81 Ironhead Sportster engine motor cases case bobber chopper. Part numbers. Uh, once again, we throw some uh, keywords in there. Bobber chopper case cases, engine motor, blah, 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 just to get the hits. And uh, you will notice this uh, seller technique. Rather than give you a close-up of your item, let's consume half of the photo with a meaningless background. I like it. Uh something going on here oh you know what this is an early 84 yeah early 84 this is not a late 84 because early uh, the late 84s would have a hole over here which is where the leads for the uh, uh, alternator would come out the alternator stator you may be able to use this case if you had to and just drill a hole in there it might work. It might work. Uh, of course, you'd leave the generator drive gear out if you're running an alternator. Let's see what the rest of the pictures look like. Nice finger. Yeah, we saw it. Saw it before. Yep. Got the bearings in it. Uh, bearings may be okay. Probably full of dirt. Uh, the only trouble with it is you are missing the rest of the matched set. So you got to come up with the bearing and a spacer for the uh, crankshaft. Looks good. It looks like she was freshly disassembled. Yeah, I think that's so sad. Uh, Parting these things out, you know. Uh, you got one team of guys on the internet taking them apart and selling them parts, and you got another bunch of guys on the internet buying a piece and putting them back together again. It don't make any sense. Well, unless you're the guy selling it and making the money. Uh, this bearing probably needs to be replaced. These, uh, roll, this type of roller bearing, if dirt gets in behind the rollers, uh, it's almost impossible to get out of there. Uh, so if this thing's been banging around open in a pile of junk for any length of time, uh, and the same for these cam bearings too, uh, uh, probably, probably junk. Uh, you could throw them in an ultrasonic and take a chance on them. You know, when I started working on bikes, these things were two bucks a piece. Uh, these days, these uh, cam bearings are like twelve bucks a piece. Crusty, crusty, crusty. Something does not look original about this. Looks like it might be oversized. Let's see what he says about it. Pretty good shape, one chip, blah, 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 point out a second picture, and he will split them. Actually, uh, I wouldn't be scared to buy these at all. A little bit pricey, I think. Uh, this damage down here, easily fixable, not a big deal. And on a scale of crustiness, uh, pretty low, maybe only uh, 2 out of 10. Let's move on. All right, and we have got uh, 57 to 71 900 cc cylinders. Let's check these out. New 5771 XL 900 cylinders. Iron source source XL. Okay, honest description. Not loaded with keywords. Let's see what they look like. And I'll tell you right now, these are uh, not OEM. These are aftermarket. The aftermarkets have a front and rear F and R stamped on them. Harley, of course, does not do that. Uh, although on some engines there will be a letter cast in here, you know, J, F, G, I've seen all kinds of letters cast in here, but not F for front and R for rear. 
Uh, looks like they've never been run, still have preservative grease on them. Yeah, a little more preservative grease, look brand new. Yeah, as we suspected, uh, Eastern, made in Taiwan, Republic of China. Uh, you know, you can't buy new ones anymore. Uh, if you need a set of cylinders, I've used these. I don't like uh, made in Taiwan parts, but you know, if you need them, you got to have them. Uh, these are the kind of thing you could measure them if you got to uh, bore them oversized just to get them straight or whatever you can. Uh, not a bad price. Let's see what it says about them. Up for auction is new old stock set of engine cylinders for your 57 to 71 XL, XLH, XLCH. This is for 900cc engines, not the 1000. Uh, this is all true. <laughs> a very rare part. Well, if you were on, you know, the moon, it might be. Uh, but these are available new still from at least a couple of two or three uh, aftermarket sources, uh, uh, Eastern included. Uh, new old stock, that's a little deceiving. New old stock applies usually to OEM parts, not aftermarket parts that are in current production. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, honest description, well, kind of honest, uh, fair price, new parts, uh, on a scale of crustiness, uh, this is a crusty at all, probably down around a two or three range. Let's see what else we got. Oops, oh damn, there we go. Harley Davidson PB Cams 58 and up Ironhead Sportster 2546 0 66R. For you guys unaware, in the Harley numbering system, R denotes a racing part, a Harley OEM racing part. XL, XLH, XLCH, yep, it'll fit all those. Let's see, we got, ooh, oh, C, $400.50 Canadian. Uh, good old USA Greenbacks, 343 Not bad, really. This is the uh, bushing side bearing surface looks good. The bushing side bearings are a lot more tolerant of damage than a roller bearing side. 1PB, 2PB, 4PB, 3PB, those are the numbers you want to see stamped on there. You know, talk a little bit about cam profile. Uh, <laughs> These are long duration cams. Uh, you know, you can tell by looking at just how wide the lobe is. Uh, these are long duration cams. Uh, these will bleed off compression. The longer the, cam the longer the valve is open, the lower your compression will end up being. So you can run a pretty high compression motor uh, with this long duration. Uh, they will suck a lot of air in and out of there. Let's see what's next. Lobe surfaces look okay. Looks like maybe a drop or two of rust in there. Not a big deal. Couple little nicks on the edge. Probably banged around in the box. Bearing surface looks good. Some little something going on right there. Yeah, some nicks on the side. I would not be concerned about that. The anal retentive amongst you might take a Dremel tool and kind of gently grind those off. The cam lobe itself looks to have no wear on it whatsoever. Looks okay. Uh, and the drive gear. These cams could only be used on the uh, uh, 900cc motors. You have to have either a mag or a vertical point distributor. These will not work on a thousand cc motors. Looks good. Looks good. Ooh, original box. The original crustiness has been cleaned off of it. That looks pretty good. Let's see what it says about it. 
Original set, new old stock, Harley Davidson PB cams, Ironhead Sportster, new unused set, 58 and later, Ironhead Sportsters with the generator, 40 years old or older, never installed, excellent condition, tiny nicks, sold these on eBay, but the buyer returned them because he did not like the nicks on the cam lobe. Nicks are nowhere where the tap and rollers ride, not an issue. Bearing services are brand new. Eh, you know, on the scale of crustiness, this is pretty low too. This is maybe a one or a two. Uh, geez, you know, that's, hell, maybe I will buy this thing. 343 US dollars. Uh, that's pretty pretty sweet deal a set of new Andrews cams for an I had probably run you 450 I like it let's hit the next guy all right we got some rusty rusty flywheels Harley Ironhead Sportster 900 cc flywheels crank connecting rods Motor engine OEM. Jesus. Once again, the douchebag loads the title up with keywords. I don't see an engine there. I don't see connecting rods there. Let's see if they're in the pictures. I see a lot of crust and rust. Oh, it's that same guy with the uh, big Harley sign in the background. Uh, you know, the rust doesn't bother me, you could sandblast that all off. What bothers me is the rust inside these bores for the crank pin and the sprocket shaft and the pinion shaft. You could easily sandblast that rust out of there, but any damage to these bores will render these flywheels useless. Uh, if you try to take a sandpaper or something through there, and clean them up you will fuck up the taper and you will not be able to true the flywheels up if the taper is fucked up uh, they may be usable may not be usable and eh, crusty and rusty mm, more crust and rust they do look to be original HD uh, over here if you could read this whole thing it would be MO C-A-S-C-O, I believe that stands for Motor Casting Company. Uh, these were cast, it looks like, in 1960. More crust and more rust. More rust and more crust. Yeah, crank pin is junk. I mean, if the wheels are rusty, you'd expect the crank pin to be rusty. It does not look like the thrust washers have ever been popped out of them. That's a good thing. Okay, and that's all the pictures. So I saw no connecting rods in there. Uh, let's see what he says. 1960s, 900cc. Right, that's true. May need a bath. Jeez, Louie. May need a bath. Holy fuck, buddy. These things need major sandblasting. Looks like these were rebuilt in the past. Uh, I see no evidence of that. Uh, actually, the only evidence I see is that they weren't rebuilt because the thrust washers don't look like they were popped out. They look nice. Well, they look nice if you need uh, rusty paperweights. There is no up and down play on the connecting rods. Well, you know... I guess if you don't include the connecting rods, there can't be any up and down play now, can there be? Ooh, but they do move a little back and forth, back and forth on the crank pin. Ah, geez Louise, shipping is expensive, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, on a scale of crusty, these guys are up there. These are uh, eight, seven, eight, maybe even a nine. Uh, I kind of don't trust the guy already because the description doesn't look like it was written for these parts. There are no connecting rods included. Uh, apparently the guy is unaware that uh, rust cannot be removed by putting more water on them. Uh, psh. <laughs> yeah, super crusty. Don't buy them. Uh, of course, they are cheap. Uh, of course, you know, uh, you could get paperweights a lot cheaper than that, though. Let's see what we got next.
Okay, let's see where we go next. Motor mounts. Okay, Harley Ironhead Sportster XI. Oh, that must be. He must have been trying to go to XL. Cast OEM rear uh, rear motor engine mount parts damaged. Okay. Damage. Okay, so it is fucked up and he knows it's fucked up. Let's see what we got here. Mm, okay, don't see anything there. Don't see anything there. Don't see anything there. Ah, here we go. You got your usual crack over here. I've never seen one of these bastards. Well, I've seen a few, very few, that don't crack over here. But they almost always crack here. Looks like a crack here, crack here, maybe a little crack there. That looks okay. Looks okay, looks okay. Looks okay. Oh, here we go. Yeah, you got a crack right here. It goes all the way through. Yeah, definitely cracked all the way through. Yep, definitely cracked all the way through. Nice fingernail. Cracked over here. Yep, saw that one. Yep, cracked over there. Okay, that's all the pictures. Let's see what it says about it. Let's see, 25 bucks is cheap, just FYI, new reproductions are available for like 60 bucks. The Pingle Heavy Duty one that never breaks is about, uh, probably about 150 these days. It used to be about 100, but it went, uh, they went up. Only oh, supposed to mount at rear, a couple stress cracks, easy, re easy repair or good one to modify, listed at half price. This one needs cleanup. Yeah, and a couple hours of work. Yeah, right. Uh huh. It just needs cleanup. Uh, I love the way guys always try to understate the problems with their items. Uh, you know, like this thing. Let's go back over here and look at this. Let's look at this here. Let's look at this one. Okay. Okay. You know. Some people would tell you, oh, hell, all you got to do is lay a bead of weld in there. Well, I'm telling you, that won't work. What you got to do is you got to go under a carbide burring tool or something, uh, grind this weld out to the bottom, get it down to clean bare metal, lay a weld in there. This guy over here is cracked over here. It looks like it's cracked over there. So this part of the mount is literally just about to pop off of there and break completely. Uh, same thing here. You got to get a carbide tool or something in there, grind this all the way down to the bottom on both sides, weld it on both sides. Then you either got to machine it or file the flat, um, uh, you know, on both sides of this to get it to fit right. Uh, you know, there's easily a couple of hours of work in here. And, uh, uh, you know, yeah, you could do it in, in five minutes and slap some weld on there. But you know what? It's just going to be broken way down underneath the weld and it's going to break again. Uh, you, you know, uh, by the time you paid a machinist or welder the 80, 90 bucks an hour they probably want, an hour to do this. Uh, you're going to be in this thing for at least a couple hours. Uh, fuck you, goodbye, new one. Uh, garbage. Uh, scale of crustiness on this thing, I'd go right up to about a 9 on here. This is almost as crusty as they get. You know, this guy's had this thing sitting around in his uh, pile of junk. He's trying to unload it, make a few bucks. Uh, I, I understand that, you know. But, you know, I've got like four of these in my scrap aluminum pile. Uh, I'll be selling them for, uh, I'll be selling them by the pound along with my old pistons, all the other bullshit, you know. Uh, th th these guys really should do the world a favor and just throw this shit away, you know. It's fucking useless. Get rid of it. Uh, don't try to sucker some poor schmuck on eBay. Uh, don't, you know what I like? Look, look at this here. One year protection plan. I want to ask a couple of rhetorical questions, okay? Coverage for product breakdowns and malfunction. 100% parts and labor. Okay, so I buy this broken piece of shit. I put it on my bike. I put the bike together again. Uh, two months later, um, uh, I, I say, oh, this is cracked and I didn't see it. So I call up these people. I say, hey, uh, I got this cracked part I bought on eBay, put on a bike. It's broken. Uh, it says here 100% parts and labor. So are these guys going to pay somebody what it would cost to remove the engine? 
remove this thing, put a new one in there, uh, reassemble, put all back together. I mean, you're looking at a thousand bucks probably. Anyway, uh, maybe what you do is you buy it, you add the plan for uh, seven ninety nine, and uh, uh, go after them for a thousand dollars later on. Maybe I should do that. <laughs> in the meantime, let's move on to the next one. Okay, next. Ooh, Harley KR connecting rod used complete. May be ready to use. XR750, XR750, 750. <laughs> may, may be ready to use. I'll get rid of that. Let's see what we got going on here. Let's check it out. Uh, it's got a KR type crank pin. Nuts look pretty new. Uh, they got the right kind of numbers on them. 55R at 292, no, excuse me, 24296-55R. Uh, once again, anything that ends in an R from Harley means it was a racing part. Uh, looking at the rod and the race over here, uh, it did not spin a race. That's good. There's some kind of schmoo on here. I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, anyway, a little pitted. I don't know. Might be usable. Uh, a little pitted. I don't know. Got a big nick in the uh, small end bushing. Not a big deal. Those are kind of easy and kind of cheap to replace. Ooh, looking a little crustier. Uh, yeah, I don't know. These things are pretty deeply deeply damaged. It could be forging marks. I don't know what that is. This one doesn't look so bad. And once again, you got a lot of rust and pitting in here. Some more schmoo. I don't know whether that's corrosion, whether that's just oil and grease. I don't know, it looks like somebody took some sandpaper to the uh, uh, front rod race. I don't know what's going on there. There's a finger, what looks like a fingerprint. Maybe this is just grease or something. I don't know. Looks like this bushing is maybe cracked. Once again, bushing's cheap and easy. Pitting is pretty deep on this thing. Pin looks okay. Uh, races, yeah, I don't know, it might be usable. I don't see anything horrible yet. You know, any imperfection at all in the rod rollers. Here's one that's pretty severely discolored. Here's one's pretty discolored. That one's discolored. Uh, that one looks discolored. Any any imperfection on these, throw them away, get a new set. Uh, you know, hone the, hone the rods. Uh, to size and put a new set in there. Okay, that's all pictures. Let's see what it says. 475. That's pretty steep. Harley K. R. Rod set complete. May be ready to use. Uh, you know, if they may be ready, they may also may not be ready. Connecting rods, bearings, retainers. Looks. Yeah, that's probably true. I like it. These rods are used back in the day with quotes as if that imparts magical properties. They were then retired and set to one side. How about they were worn out, tossed aside because they were no good anymore? Recently the rods were be blasted, covered with grease to be preserved. Should be a simple homestead process to repost the rod themselves. Well, yeah, kinda, maybe, sorta, but you know, repolishing is the least of your problems. You know, your problems are, your problems are right here, right here. 
these races, these rollers, this pin. You know, is the pin round or the race is round? You know, the rollers are no good. Maybe these are already mixed on an oversize. Maybe you got to get new rods put in or races put in here. Who the hell knows? Uh, you know, on the other hand, uh, you got a KR. Uh, that's going to be kind of a rare piece of machine. Uh, you may have to buy something like this. Uh, you know, they probably are refurbishable. Maybe not easy. Uh, you know, races are replaceable. The rollers are replaceable. Uh, you probably could... I don't know. I haven't seen any pins for sale lately. The pin looks okay, though. But, yeah, these are probably doable. Well, the scale of crustiness, I don't know, 4 or 5. Not horrible. Uh, not horrible, but, uh, you know, not all that good either. Uh, the description, I don't know, maybe ready to use. I kind of think that's a little mis a little bit misleading there. I think it should say... You know, definitely need to be rebuilt because only an idiot will put those in a bike without uh, checking them out thoroughly. Anyway, let's move on. See what's next. Let's see. Watch list. We did some rods. Let's look at this guy. Crankcase. Harley Davidson Sportster Ironhead left motor case late 1981 XL late 84 85 no damage. Well, let's see if it's got no damage. I'll tell you right now, this is not late 84. Does not have the hole drilled in here for the uh, alternator wires. So this is a generator style crankcase. Which 81 would be a generator motor. Looks okay. Looks okay. Oh, what's going on? What is this stuff? I like looking at the background of these. What the hell is this? Looks like, I don't know, something. Not motorcycle parts, though. Yeah, it looks okay. Looks okay. Oh, what? What? Chewy Lemonhead? Mike Ike? What the hell is that? Mike and Ike? Yeah, let's Mike and Ike. Let's see what Mike and Ike is. Mike and Ike. Mike and Ike Jelly Candy Original Fruits. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. So, we have a guy here selling motorcycle crankcases and candy. And this looks like the sliding window of a Quickie Mart. Yeah, you know, you drive up, uh, let me take uh, six boxes of Mike and Ike jelly candy and a crankcase. Oh yeah, here you go, buddy. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, and I need a couple of fresh lemons thrown in. What the fuck? I wonder if his boss knows what he's doing. Eh, can't take pictures. Looks okay. Well, that's interesting. Huh. No damage. Well, I didn't see any damage. Let's see what it says about it. Good takeoff. Needs to be clean. Other than that, is a good part. Had been removed from an 84 HD. It would have to be an early 84. Late 84 is when they switched to the alternators. And we know this is a pre-alternator crankcase. 
Don't show any crack, no patches, or cut out, no damage. We carry many parts for different motorcycles and jelly candy and fresh lemons. Be sure to check on our shop. Okay, all right. I'm calling your boss, buddy. He's selling motorcycle parts at work. Get back to get back to dishing out the jelly candies, man. You got work to do, loafer. Let's hit the next guy up. Yeah, we're covering a lot of ground today. Let's see. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I've been looking forward to harping on this one. <laughs> Don't get me started here. Let's lie. Right, we'll do it. 72 Harley XL XLH 1000 Ironhead Sportster Headlight Case Housing Bucket. Used. This headlight bucket is in acceptable condition and shows normal signs of wear. Okay, let's see what normal signs of wear are to this guy. Let's put a couple big dents in it. Let's drill a couple extra holes in it. Let's include some rusty hardware and some cut off wires. Let's make sure there's a lot of rust on the attaching bolt. Oh, and let's make sure we drilled out the four original rivets and replaced them with crusty old screws. Next. Let's make sure we have a goddamn pop-up. Let's make sure we've got a rusty, real rusty screw on the uh, retainer ring. Let's see what else you've got going on here. Oh, make sure that we have uh, extra holes drilled in it that we didn't bother to deburr. Okay, that, 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 probably, that probably cut you to shreds right there. That, that piece of metal sticking up over there, that's probably razor sharp. Let's make sure it's real rusty on the inside. Let's make sure it includes uh, broken and cut off wires. Uh, look at this. These, this piece of reinforcement here is usually held down with four rivets, uh, one rivet in each quarter. So we've drilled the rivets out, we stuck some screws in holes, and then we put some ridiculously oversized nuts and bolts in here. <laughs> Normal wear and tear. Okay, yeah, slightly used. Normal wear and tear. Oh, and look at here. One, two, three, four, five extra holes drilled in it. And once again, look at the, the metal hanging out over here, the, the, the burrs on this thing. Uh, shit, you could, like I said, rip you to shreds. Uh, shit. Normal wear and tear. Okay, I believe you. Yeah, okay, I'm good, I'm good. What's next? Shit, oh, look at this. <laughs> fuck, what the fuck? We got one, two, three, four, five, six extra holes in it. You can see how nasty this dent is. <laughs> what a piece of junk. Got a lot of extra rust. What the, f and he wants how much for this? Look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six extra holes in it. No, seven, here's another one right here. Seven extra holes, seven. Jesus. Ah, good lordy. Get another dent. And here we go, here we got a nice reflection of somebody's fat gut looking at this thing. There you go. More, more cheese grater effect over here. Uh, good shot of the dents. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, that's it for pictures. Let's see what he says about this piece of shit. Uh, used is an acceptable condition. In what fucking universe is that acceptable? Acceptable if the next location is going to be your garbage can. Shows normal signs of wear. Well, okay, if you tossed it in a monkey cage and you gave the monkey a drill and showed him how to use it, there is some rust and a bit of peeling chrome. There are also some dents. Are you fucking shitting me? Ch Williams Vintage Cycle Company? <laughs> what the fuck? 
And you want 43 fucking US dollars for this? Buddy, you're a lying sack of shit. This thing is fucking garbage. You could buy a fucking new one for fucking $30. You fuck. What a fuck. 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 All right, we have a winner, folks. We have a winner. You know, if you're that stupid and you buy, who in the... What the... I can't... Fuck. 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 Let's go on. All right, crusty headline. Let's check this out. 68 crankcase. Let's check this out. 1968 Harley Davidson Sportster XLH Ironhead Motor Engine Cases. Condition used. Used condition. Let's check them out. Yeah, let's see. Looks okay. Don't see anything. Oh, here we go. Big chunk of the. Uh, primary chain adjuster bracket broken off. Oh yeah, uh-huh. There it is, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, 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 that's no big deal. Leads to your problems. Oh, shit. Right here, the uh, mounting ear for the uh, sprocket cover broken off. Uh, the stock drain plug has been replaced with a, probably a piped thread, uh, Allen plug. Belly numbers look original. They look like they do match. A lot of these engines crack between here and here. This one doesn't look like it is. Uh, the kickstand, uh, comes up and hits it. Uh, I usually put a stop on the kickstand to keep it from destroying the bottom of your, my crankcases. Uh, what do we have? Oh, here. Oh, this is interesting. This is these are these are the oil pump mounting bosses. Okay, so the stud in the hole got fucked up. Apparently, the guy must have drilled the hole oversized and then epoxied a nut on here <laughs> epoxied a nut on here <laughs> well I give him credit for clever uh, not what I would have done but credit for clever but you know I'll tell you the, the engines in the frame I, I don't know clever uh, casting numbers Don't see anything too fucked up there. Ooh, oh, now it's getting bad. We've had a uh, counter shaft needle bearing failure. I could tell you what happened here right now. The needle bearings all went bad, busted up, fell out. The counter shaft started uh, riding on the thin metal case of that little cup that those bearings sit in. It busted through that. Then it started busting through the uh, the wall of the bearing boss. Uh, this is this renders this uh, very difficult to repair. Oh, oh, here we go. And we have the uh, main bearing race. Got a crack over here, so there was uh, insufficient end play, or else the uh, main shaft thrust load was thrusting into this, and it overheated this and broke it. That that's not totally unrepairable, but it's not easy, and it's not cheap to fix that. Yeah, okay, there you go. Close, at least being honest about it. Yeah, that's going to be difficult to fix. Uh, uh, going to be difficult to fix. There's a couple repairs that can't be done in that area. And that's it for pictures. That seemed worse. Ooh. $469.99. Uh, well, that's kind of a lot of money for a crankcase that's going to need uh, several hundred dollars worth of work on it in machining to restore it to a serviceable condition. Let's touch on it real quick. Uh, this is easy to fix, not a big deal. This over here, uh, uh, the early cases were uh, very thin in this area. Uh, 
the way to fix this would be to machine a reinforcement out of a piece of aluminum billet, uh, weld it to the crankcase, and remachine the whole hole here. Actually, the way I usually fix these things is I machine this whole area completely out, uh, create my billet, uh, weld the billet in the crankcase, and then uh, line bore this hole to match the uh, counter shaft other side of the transmission. A lot of custom machining in this. This is not easy. Uh, it's very critical, demanding, exacting work, uh, not an easy fix. Let's see what he says about this. Remove from 68, yeah, it probably was. Electric start might have been. Wait a minute, yeah, I had electric start, okay. Uh, I do not have the title for it. Point out some flaws I noticed. Maybe more that he hasn't noticed. Okay, guy's honest, guy's honest. Uh, a lot pricier than it should be. Uh, scale of crusty, probably about a seven. Uh, you know, at least he's honest up front, showed you the pictures. Uh, if you were to buy this, you know what you're getting into. Uh, need some work. Is repairable. If you had to have this to go with the 68 you were restoring, heck, not my first choice, but, uh, you know, it is doable. Let's move on. Okay, we hit that. Uh, let's see. Let's do this one. 757 to 76 Ironhead Sportster lower end renew kit 900,000 cc models. New $575. Holy fuck. Huh. Uh, let's see. All right, let's talk about this for a second. See these over here? RPLS. This stands for replaces Harley Davidson 24292-52. Uh, I've been told that it's illegal for people who copy parts to use the original manufacturer's part number on the part without notating that it is a copy. So they stamp or forge in this replaces, okay? Uh, so these are Chinese copies. And just FYI, this rod assembly uh, I've seen on eBay for as cheap as 60 bucks. So uh, $575 for the whole shoot match is no deal at all. Uh, the Timken bearing match set is about 100 The pinion bearing race is probably about 60 And the rollers are relatively cheap, 15 20 bucks, whatever. So you got a hundred, hundred and fifty, hundred and sixty roll. Let's say let's say this shit's worth two hundred dollars. You got a seal, rollers, a couple bearings. So uh, uh, maybe two hundred dollars, uh, sixty bucks for these on eBay. So I could buy all of this shit for two hundred sixty dollars. Yeah, and there's the individual parts. Okay, so this is not a steal at all. This is a ripoff. Uh, let's see. I'm not gonna talk about the guy and what I think about. See what it says. Including this kit, everything you will need. Complete, renew the complete lower end of your bike. All after part, parts, all parts are aftermarket. Will meet or exceed OEM parts. Ready to install. Blah blah blah. Match Timkin. Blah blah blah. Right side case bearing. Blah blah blah. Rollers furnish. Blah blah blah. Build with confidence. Ah, fuck. I don't know. You know. And and I'll tell you, uh, I don't use these rods ever on an engine. Uh, I, I just really have heartburn with putting uh, uh, Chinese connecting rods in, in my Harley. Uh, you know, you guys do whatever you want. Uh, I tried to use a set of these years ago, and the taper on the shaft was fucked up, and I could not true the fly was with it. They would not come into true. Um, I ended up uh, going with a set of OEM rods. Uh, back in those days, you could buy a new set of connecting rods with the crank pin and bearings and all that shit from Harley. They were 250 bucks, and I had no trouble truing the flywheels up with the OEM rods in it. Uh, I don't use these Chinese parts inside a motor. Uh, you know, if they were the last parts on earth, well, yeah, maybe. What choice have you got to use? Uh, but, you know, especially these Chinese parts, $575, that's just stupid fucking uh, ridiculous for these things. Uh I would steer away from this. Uh, you could buy this stuff all individually if you got to use Chinese parts. You know, the, the Timken 
it looks like it does say Timken on there, so that may be, uh, 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 you know, original Timken stuff. I don't know if they could copy that. Uh, you know, bearings are kind of hard to make. I don't know where these are made at. Actually, they're, they're probably made in China. They might be made in Japan, but at least they're, you know, at least they're Timken. Hell, they might be made in the United States. Who knows where they get them made at anymore? But uh, stay clear of these. I would. Let's see what else we got. Whoops. Okay, here's another set of those rods. You got the 57 to 76 and the 7781. Uh, the rods are identical. The only thing, the only thing different is the uh, sprocket shaft bearing. Let's take a look. We got a crankcase over here. Crankcases are always fun. Ah, this, 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 this. Ah, let's do this one. Sportster cam cover cut down. Nice description. Simple to the point. No extra keywords you don't need. Used. 169 bucks, yeah, a little high. Uh, was polished. Needs to be polished again. Uh, I look at these uh, thrust surfaces on these bushings because if the cam cams were thrusting, they chew into here, but these look okay. That doesn't mean the bores are okay, but yeah, you know, this is kind of indi indicative of uh, low miles. Yeah, not bad. Uh, we got a little problem here. Really needs another polishing though. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Oh, ouch. Oh. All right, here's the problem. This plug right here, or this is a plug, and it's pressed into the hole that was drilled for the internal oil passage. Uh, there's a vertical oil passage that goes straight down under this plug, and then there is a horizontal passage that goes straight out this way, and uh, is the passageway that transfers oil to the crankcase to the passageways that go up to your rocker boxes. And of course it's cracked right through here. And then this hole, hell, I don't know what this hole is. I don't think I've ever seen that hole on one of these. And then, fucking pop up, geez, fuck. Uh, over here you have a threaded uh, repair insert. So the threads in this hole got fucked up in this hole. The guy drilled it oversized, tapped it, and then put this threaded insert in there. And this particular threaded insert has these little wedges, and you knock those in with the hammer, and they bite into the th tapped threads, and they lock the insert in to keep it from turning. That's a fairly quality insert. They use uh, that style on aircraft a lot. Got a problem here. Oh, nice. Looks good in the sun. Could see a little something going on here, though. Guy lives out in the desert. Nice. Nice. Oh. Yeah. Uh huh. Ah. Uh, none of these holes look correct to me. As I seem to recall, these holes are supposed to be 1224 threads. This is not 1224 thread. Not sure what size it is. This looks like quarter 20 thread maybe? And then this, God, I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, I don't know why that's in there. I don't think that's supposed to be there at all. Jesus. Huh. And that's all the pictures. Jeez. Huh. You know, if this was mine, I'd take this out. Yeah, maybe I'd leave it in there. I don't know. This here, I would just drill this out, weld this all back in. That's what I would do with that. You know, for, for myself, this is not a deal breaker. 
uh, not a deal breaker. Let's see what he says about it. Early style, Aaron had Sportster cam cover being cut down. 68, 69. Yep, whoever did it did a pretty nice job. Yep, mining holes with a magneto or distributor have good threads. Uh, yeah, maybe. One has an insert. Yep. Found some screws. Check it out. Yep. Uh, need some attention. Crankcase vent holes. Yes, it is. This was probably a race bike or a stroker. I see no evidence of that. Mounting surface looks good, and so do the bushings. It is not all beat up and gouged. A professional polisher job would make it look sweet. Yes, it would. You know, this is a hard part. Uh, the thing is cut down, so for a guy who's doing restoration, it's it's uh, useless. Uh, a restore guy would not want it. If you're doing some kind of custom bike, uh, yeah, you might you might want it, but you got a bunch of work to do over here. Uh, it looks to be in solid shape otherwise. Uh, the problem you run into with this is if this is a 68, the part of the case that hung down over here is where the clutch cable mounts. So you're going to have to rig up something else to work your clutch with. Uh, you know, but for me, this is not a deal breaker. Would I pay 169 bucks for it? Hell no. Uh, you know, this is 50, 60, 80 dollars. Uh, guys, honest. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, know what you're getting into. You know, a little too high for me, price wise. Condition needs a little work, which is probably more than most of you guys want to deal with. Uh, but he's honest. I give him credit for honesty. Uh, yeah, I think I've had enough. I think I'm just going to end it right here. Uh, this is a belt buckle the guy is selling. I like this. I wish I was selling these. I don't know how many of them he sells, but uh, that's pretty sweet. Hey, I'll take it easy. Subscribe to my website. Thanks for watching. I'm out of here. Bye.